What's up guys, I'm Rasim from RossBarTech.com and this is another tutorial in assembly programming. Now in this class I'm going to talk about nested loops. So let's get started. Let's open up MU8086. Now, if you guys watched my last video, you guys know that uh, this is the, the structure of a loop, right? You have to have a label first, right? You can name your label whatever you want. I'm going to call mine L1 and each label has to end with a colon, right? And the loop ends with the loop instruction. So L-O-O-P is the loop instruction, hit space, and type in the label name without the colon, so L1, no colon. So this is a structure of a loop, right? Now, the way a nested loop works is it's actually another loop within this loop. So I'm gonna hit enter a couple times. So let's uh, create another label. Let's call this one uh, L2, right? Use the colon, and we have to end this loop with a loop instruction as well. So L O O P L two. Now we have two loops, one loop inside the L one loop here, right? So this is a nested loop. This is the structure of a nested loop, right? Now, again, the first thing we got to do is um, give a value to CX. We learned that in the last tutorial. We know that CX is the counter. Every time CX hits a loop, it decrements the CX register. So every time this loop instruction is initiated or any loop instruction is initiated, it decrements CX and it also compares CX to zero. If CX does not equal zero, it continues the loop, right? So again, we got to give CX a value. So let's give CX a value of, let's say five, right? So now uh, CX has a value of five. So now we got to do something within this part here let's add let's add the print character uh, code here so we can print the character on the screen we know the uh, that we have to uh, move into DL a value right that we want to print on the screen so let's print one on the screen we know we have to add into DL 48 so it prints character uh, one on the screen right all right now we're gonna have to uh, type in the print character code which is move into a h right two h that's the code for print the character on the screen well the way this works it, it looks in the deal register and it'll print whatever is in the deal register we also have to use the int 21 h to initiate it right so basically this code here it's going to print character one on the screen right so the way the program works now the program is going to start it initially has a value of five right because we gave cx a value of five we know CX to counter, right? So it's gonna go down here. It's going to print character one on the screen, right? Now it's gonna go down here, right? So now let's add something to this uh, second loop here. Now let's add another print character code in here. Let's move into DL. Let's say we wanna print five, but we wanna print character five on the screen. So we, we add five there, we add into DL. 48 so we print character file right so now we're going to use the print character code which is move into a h 2 h right then we have to end it with int 21 h right but let's start from the top now we moved into cx 5 right so now cx has a value of 5 we go down here this is the code for print character it's going to print character 1 on the screen right so now we're going to jump down here it's going to print character to, it's going to print the character 5 on the screen, right? So now, again, it, it gets to this loop point right here, right? Once it gets to this loop point, the first thing it does, it subtracts 1 from CX, right? Then it compares CX to 0. If CX does not equal 0, it's going to jump to whatever loop you have next to it. So it's going to jump to this part here, loop 2, right? It's going to do this code again, which is print character 5. So it's going to print character 5 again, go back down to here, it's gonna it's gonna subtract one from CX and it's gonna compare CX from zero. If CX doesn't equal zero, it's gonna again continue. Then um, then that's pretty much it for that part. So let's just hit run. Let's see what happens. So let's hit emulate. Let's hit run. As you can see, it's just printing one five one five right. I'm gonna show you guys why it's continuing. Now so let's go down here and let's move into CX. The value of five again. Let's see what happens. So again, let's start from the top. We, CX has a value of five right here. It goes down here, then it prints character one on the screen, right? So then it gets down here, it prints character five, then it gets to this loop instruction, 
once it gets to this loop instruction, it's going to subtract 1 from Cx, and it's going to compare Cx to 0. If, it, if not, it's going to keep going and going and going, right? So now, when we get down here, we're going to move into Cx5 again, so, the, so, so it just keeps going. So we move into Cx5, it gets down to here. It's going to subtract 1 from Cx, so now it's going to be 4, right? So now the loop is going to it's going to jump to label 1, which is up here, and then it's going to continue. So let's hit emulate. Let's hit run. As you can see, it's printing 1, 5, 5, 5, 1, 5, 5, 5. The loop is just keep going and going and going. Okay, the reason it's keep going is because Cx is keep getting more and more value. So down here, we gave Cx another value of 5. So it's going to keep going. It's going to keep repeating this pattern of 1, 5, 5, 5, 5, 1, 5, 5, 5, 1, 5, 5, 5, and so on and so forth. So how do we end the loop? The, the way we end the loop is we have to use another register or another variable to store the information. I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. Now, when, when working with nested loops, you should always have, uh, you should have like a space holder. You should have a register or a variable that will hold uh, the value of CX so then you can keep moving them around when you need to. All right, so let's go up here. Let's uh, move into BX this time, the value of 5. So now we have uh, the value of 5 in CX and we have the value of 5 in BX above the loop code here, right? So. The reason why we're using two registers now is because when we get down to this point here, we actually want this whole loop and this whole program to end. Well, once the loop jumps back to this spot here, we'll uh, decrement, right? Decrement BX, right? Down up here. And down here, we'll uh, move into CX. BX and I'm gonna hit run and I'll let's delete this right here and I'm gonna explain what's happening. So let's hit emulate. Let's hit run. Now see it, the the program ended. I'll explain exactly what happened right now because it could get confusing. It, it gets really confusing in the beginning, but you have to just take it from piece by piece and just look at every little step. All right, we're gonna start from the top. We gave CX a value of five. We also gave BX a value of five. Right? We know CX is the counter, right? BX is not a counter. We're using BX to, to end the second loop, basically. That's that's all we're doing. Now, guys, let's just start from the top. So I'll explain exactly what's going on. Uh, you know, we moved into CX value of 5. So now CX has a value of 5, right? We moved into BX a value of 5. Now BX has a value of 5. The reason we're doing that is because we need uh, BX to be able to end the second loop. It's like the placeholder for the CX for the second loop, right? You can use a variable, you can do whatever you want, but I'm just going to use register BX. Again, from uh, we're going to use uh, this, I'll explain what decrement BX means in a second, but we know that this is going to print character 1 on the screen, right? This is the code to print character 1 on the screen. It's going to get down to here, it's going to print character 5 on the screen, right? Now we get to this loop instruction, right? We know the first thing it does, it subtracts 1 from Cx, right? Then it compares Cx to 0. If Cx does not equal 0, it's going to go back to this spot, loop 2, right? Because that's what the loop we added. It's going to keep repeating that. It's going to print 5 on the screen. It's going to go down here. It's going to decrement Cx again. It's going to keep doing that until Cx is 0. Once Cx is 0, it's gonna, we're going to move down to here, right? Once we get down to here, we're going to move Bx into Cx, right? We know Bx had a value of 5 initially. <laughs> And the reason, and we're, we're moving BX into CX. So now, CX is the, is the counter. It has a value of five from here. It's going to get to this loop point here. So again, the first thing it's going to do is going to uh, decrement CX by one, right? So now CX is going to have a value of four. It's going to compare uh, CX to zero. If CX is not zero, it's going to jump back to loop one here. Then it's going to decrease. See again, it's going to decrement BX up here, and so on, so so forth. So that's how the program ends, basically. You need another variable or register to as a placeholder to end the outer loop, basically. That's what, it's, what it's there for. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a like. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'm Rustin from RossmerTech.com, and thanks for watching.